and things to look for when identifying the sex of a giraffe are those little horn-like structures on the top of their head. Well, this one I know is a little bit tricky to see at the moment because their head is behind the leaves, but as they move around, keep a close eye on the top of their head and if there is hair on the top of those little horn-like structures, it's a good indication that they are female. So here we can see clearly it's very hairy on top. The males will be bald on the top of those horns. And they're actually called ossicones. So they are vestigial horns. They may have had long horns many years ago, but over time they have lacked the necessity to have long horns and they're just left with these short little stumps. The males will be considerably thicker than the female's horns, probably about twice as thick, so the, the thickness or diameter of those ossicones, as long as the hairiness of them will help you to sex giraffe. And I'm really happy we found them because they are so much taller than us. They've got a good vantage point, and if they were to spot an animal like a leopard, they would actually walk up to it and stare very intently in its direction. And that's a really great way of finding animals. When you see giraffes staring very, very intently in one area, you're almost guaranteed to find something there. Cheetah are another animal that giraffe will not be scared of or run from and can often walk just meters from them while the giraffe keep a close eye on them. Well, isn't this beautiful? She's popped out onto Philemon's cut line, out in the open, and we're going to get some great views of her as she continues across. Interesting, you'll see both of her left legs move at the same time and both of her right legs move at the same time. And uh, it's very uncommon ability or, or, or technique for walking. Most animals will have either a front left and a back right planted at any given stage, but the giraffe with their very long legs and strange anatomy have developed their own unique style of walking. This is going to be beautiful again. She's walking straight out towards us. There's this one little bush in the way, and then she should pop into the clearing again. The bush is still quite quiet this morning. And while we sit here, not much going on in terms of bird calls. And out is by update that we'll get between the drives from the Arethusa guides. So, sadly, we don't have any intelligence as to who that could be, but really interesting that they were seen, apparently, on the Juma Waterhole Cam, two young males. And I'm fairly confident that the Salada Breakaway Pride do have a few young males in it. So, that could help piece together the puzzle for us. But there's been a lot of changes in the lion and leopard dynamics in this area over the last few months. So we're all trying to work out what's going on, but it's not very easy because a lot of the time the animals come through our properties before we actually get to see them.
And we've got another request on any information that we may have on something else. And that's from Ellen Fowler. Morning, Ellen, and I hope you're doing well. Ellen is one of our viewers who follows the leopards very closely within the whole of the Sabi Sands, not just this area we work in. And she's got uh, great insights into where the animals are moving and what they're doing and their ages and their lineage. And Ellen, thanks very much for all the help you provide us with on drives with that information that's so, so interesting about the leopards of this area. We had a report uh, yesterday that Kunyuma, one of our young male leopards, he's just over two and a half years old, was seen with a bit of blood. It was actually the night before last that he was seen with blood uh, dripping down onto his stomach or on his stomach. It wasn't gushing down. And then he was seen the following morning, yesterday morning, by Aubrey, one of the Juma guides. And Aubrey said that he had a few scratches on his back and a bit of a flap of skin. So he had been in a tussle of sorts, probably with another male leopard. And he hasn't been seen since then, so we've got no further updates on how he's doing. But... Uh, it's important for me to stress that apparently those injuries didn't seem very bad. It was just indication that he had been a little bit banged up, but nothing too serious as far as I'm aware. Ellen, it would be wonderful to actually see him again and get an update on how he's doing because we haven't seen him for weeks, and especially after him being in a tussle, it would be wonderful to know. Anyway, let's carry on looking at these beautiful giraffes before they disappear into the thick bush. And Molly would like to know if giraffes' patterns are all different, just like that of zebras. And yes, Molly, they are all slightly different to one another. No different to the spots of a leopard or the stripes of a zebra. And you actually get various subspecies of giraffe. There's nine different subspecies of giraffe throughout Africa. And my favorite one is the reticulated giraffe. So even though you, they, all the giraffes will have slightly different patterns, you do get considerably different patterns between the subspecies. And I'm actually going to get my book out to show you once the giraffe have moved off. My favorite is the reticulated giraffe, which I will show you a bit later. And that oxpeck is doing a great job in trying to glean all the parasites off this giraffe. What an awesome angle this is. These are red-billed oxpeckers. They've got a cousin called the yellow-billed oxpecker that we don't see here very often. They do, from time to time, come into the Sabi Sands, mainly on the large herds of buffalo. And the tree that this giraffe is now feeding on is called a buffalo thorn tree. And it's important for you to know that it's got a huge amount of thorns in it, both hooked thorns and straight thorns, which make it a little bit more difficult for the giraffe to go about feeding. And you can see it's trying to be as careful as possible with that long tongue. And you'll typically find that the thorny plants are the ones with the tasty leaves. And that's why they've developed this security system in the form of thorns, making it more difficult for the herbivores to pluck off the leaves. But as you can see, this giraffe is making very easy work of it, delicately wrapping its tongue around the leaves, almost individually. That way, avoiding the thorns. Awesome view we're having here. And we don't get to see giraffe as often as we'd like to, so this is a real bonus. You 
can clearly see now those RC cones are fully haired on the top and the male, if we were looking at it this angle from behind, we would clearly see two patches of skin on the top of those little horn-like structures. Perfect morning sunlight shining on her. We couldn't ask for much more. It's incredible how flexible that long neck is. She's quite a young female, I think. I think she's going to grow a little bit taller. The other one was considerably bigger, so this one's still got a little bit of growth, I think, before she gets to her full size. We've got She's stretching up a little bit higher to get to the leaves that almost all other animals other than elephants won't be able to reach, and that makes them very fortunate, I guess, in that they don't have much competition in terms of the area in which they browse of the trees. Good morning, Elaine in Long Island, and welcome on board with us. Elaine would like to know how old I think these giraffes are. I would guess that the individual we've just been looking at now is about three or four years old, and the other one fully grown, how old, it would be a complete guess, um, but they live for a long time, up to about 20 years. And it's typically the larger animals that do have longer lifespans. So giraffe and buffalo do live for a bit longer than the smaller herbivores that we get out here. And Elaine would also like to know, why is it that there are two giraffe, two females with no youngsters? And it could be that the younger one is not yet sexually mature. And the older one could well have had a, uh, a baby in the, the, the summer months of November, December or January when they typically give birth but she could have lost it to predators. And Sorry, I just thought I heard something there. So I think that's what's happened. I think she would have just lost her previous calf to, to predators and even leopard can kill baby giraffe. Male leopard, like Tangana, that you just had a brief glimpse of earlier this morning, have been known to kill baby giraffe. And lion will certainly make short work of a baby giraffe if they get the opportunity. So, even though they're born with a height of about two meters, they lack the experience and speed and skill to evade predators.